If you've ever wondered about how value investing works or how people earn their fortunes just by investing, have a look at the story of this man, David Shriden. Now David is a professor at Stanford University and his passion for computer science is what makes him different. But let me tell you, he's no ordinary professor. He always heard students about their entrepreneurship ideas and in some cases he even invested in them. So to understand how he managed to be the first investor of Google, let us throw some light on one of his students, Andy. He was a very interesting character who barely attended classes and instead spent his time working on personal projects. In 1982, Andy dropped out of his PhD program and founded Sun Microsystems, a company that sold computer components. He left the company when it hit $1 billion in annual revenue and founded another company called Granite Systems. And this time, the man who co-founded this company with Andy was David. After just a year, Granite Systems was acquired by Cisco for $220 million and David received a hefty sum of $22 million right away. Now, for a professor who earned an annual income of one lakh US dollars, this was great, right? And so this was the time when Larry Page and Sergey Brin, who were the founders of Google at that time, came to know about the professor who had made millions by co-founding a company. And you know what, guys? These two weren't even the students of David. They just knocked down on his door and pitched their idea. After ten minutes of the pitch, David was intrigued with what they had in mind, and he wrote a check of one lakh US dollars. His investment in Google is now worth 4.5 billion dollars as I'm making this video. That is equal to about 33,000 crores in Indian currency. While this was a story, let's understand why it was so special and what people like you and me can learn from it. So, like I said, David was passionate about computer science, and hence he precisely understood what Google had to offer in its early days. Again, he wasn't just any investor who just pumped their money into the ideas of two college students. Instead, he had deep knowledge in his computer field and he knew exactly what he was doing. Another thing that might have pushed him to invest in Google was his early success in his company Granite Systems. If people like you and me invest in something and it turns out to be a great deal, then we would be more confident in investing in other things as well, right? Another important point is that it wasn't just Google. This man had invested in about 20 companies, few of which did not turn out to be good. And that is exactly how the game goes. You win some and you lose some. But in David's case, this one investment was all it took to overshadow his bad investment decisions multiple times. Moreover, he didn't just stop there. He co-founded and invested in various companies like VMware, Kalia, and Arista Networks. Now, the one thing that really surprised me was the lifestyle of the professor. Even after being valued at 11.2 billion dollars, this man still cuts his own hair, drives a modest Honda vehicle, and has been living in the same house since 40 years. He has literally taken only one vacation throughout his lifetime, and he still regrets spending money on that vacation. Well, I, on the contrary, feel that we should take vacations and enjoy life to the fullest while we still can. But one question we all can ask ourselves is that why do we aspire bigger homes and better cars when people like David, who are billionaires, are living a normal, non-flashy life? That's it for this video, guys. Do like and comment if you like the video, and do share it if you learn something new. I'll see you guys in the next one.